Well, it's really heading up our podcast for the Australian Turf Club as we head towards the Everest, and uh, a very happy trainer joins us, Joe Pride. How are you? Yeah, I'm well, thanks, Tim. Yeah. That was quite a win, wasn't it, in the shorts uh, with Eduardo? It certainly was, and it was uh, you know, the first sort of bit of serious contest we've seen between some of these sprinters. Um, well, I mean, there was the the was the original the Concord Sprint, but this brought together you know a lot more of the contenders, and uh, yeah, it was nice to come out on top and it's you know four weeks out so that's in perspective but at the same time it was a it was a really big win for my horse were you confident all the way down the straight it was an interesting race wasn't it because he, he he got out came back and then just came again just a, i'm not sure if i was so confident about winning but i was just so confident going into the race and watching the race that the horse would run well because he he genuinely doesn't have a bad run in him he, he he's such a such a serious race horse. He, um, he he just loves the contest, and when he gets in a scrap like that, he invariably comes out on top. Second Everest in a row for him, and uh, it, John Masara and Star have got on board. Yeah, yeah, fantastic to to have such good partners, and um, it was it was a good start to that partnership. You know, it was only a week early we'd signed up, and um, to have the horse perform at that level um, uh, was yeah, it was just a great start. So. And um, what about now? He, he he will just have a trial before he, he goes to the Everest, or yes, yeah, we haven't decided on a date there yet, but um, it just looks like uh, one trial is certainly enough, um, and hopefully we will, one we can get Nash um, back on him. He's got a real affinity with the horse, and uh, he's certainly an important part of that uh, that that team. How do you reflect on last year? Uh, Nash wasn't on board. Rachel was there, and he just <laughs> boomed straight out of the gates. Reflect or forget, Tim. I'm not sure. It was uh, probably more more wanting to forget. But anyway, look, it's uh, it was a learning experience. I think uh, the horse that I've got now that is a significantly more mature horse. And it's a funny thing to say about an eight year old when he was seven in it last year. But um, I'd only just started training at that point. And know a lot more about him now. And just think we've got the the recipe right going to this one. It's the perfect preparation, and it was always designed around him peaking in in the Everest, not around us showing the horse off and trying to get the slot. It's I've given him the preparation to have him peak on Everest Day. And I know everyone sort of thought he was wound up the other day, but that's the kind of horse this horse is. He, he comes out of the paddock and ready to win a race. But he's give, been given the right preparation this time. It's a fascinating race, isn't it? And that's what this podcast is all about. It's about the Everest. So we've got an eight-year-old gelding here in Eduardo. We saw, yes, 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 there's a colt. It, it really is all things to all horses. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's what it brings together. Look, I think it's important that, it, that Australia has a sprint like this, and um, um, we're seeing uh, so many imports come to Australia now to compete in our, our staying races, and uh, they come for the money. Now, they'll come over for this Everest if they're good enough, and that shows you how the quality of our sprinters in this country that very few have tried, um, and I think you'll find ongoing that very few will try. Um, there's not enough money to encourage the um, our sprinters to go overseas other than breeding stock. Um, but you know it would be it would be silly for me to take Eduardo to you know say say England to race because the prize money that I can run for here is just so much more significant. But we'd love to get some competition from overseas. You were schooled through John Sires, and you, you take a very unique approach, don't you, Joe? Uh, look, you got a small group of horses, and you focus on them at all age. And like one of one of the cornerstones of your training is to take them a little bit older on occasions. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we've had horses race deep into their their old age. Paula Muscle only retired uh, twelve months ago as a ten year old. Um, Destiny's Kiss made it to almost eleven. Um, look, there's you know while they while they're competitive, they're a long time retired, and love to think we can get the the maximum out of them for for the owners. And that doesn't mean racing them um, in any kind of discomfort. You know, they're at that age, and and you take Eduardo as a good example. As an eight year old, he's he's a very sound racer. So he's uh, he's got a per- he's, he he X rays perfectly and. Um, he doesn't have an aching bone in his body. He is a really fit um, horse who's only had the 22 starts. What, what about swimming? You take him for a swim a couple of days or a couple of times a day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Swimming is an important part of that training. As you can imagine, you've got that uh, cardio fitness that you get out of the swimming without the concussion on the legs. Extremely important. Also, you know, on, on hot summer days, um, but we even do it through the winter. Nice way to cool off. It's a... It's a variance in the training routine. Yeah, you do the same thing with them all the time. They're bound to get bored. But the swimming just certainly sort of mixes it up a bit for them. Classic legend will go in first up into the Everest. Uh, pretty impressive trial. He really responded this time. Um, 
I'm not sure. Look, Lee's a great trainer. I wouldn't second guess him for a second and a, and a fellow bunny at that. And uh, look, I think he's, I'm not going to question the preparation, but I would think it would be hard to win a race like that first up, uh, particularly given the fact he hasn't had the, the races, you know, earlier on this year. He was, he was, um, he went to Hong, Hong Kong and obviously hasn't raced much in the past 12 months, but not second guessing the horse or, or Les is handling it. What will be your approach to the race? And what, what, what will you tell Nash? I don't really need an approach. That's a good thing. My job is just to get the horse ready. Um, I believe you know, three quarters of that job's already done. In terms of what I told Nash, absolutely nothing. And that's what I did on Saturday. I just let Nash go and sort it out. He uh, has an amazing ability, uh, especially on this horse of those, to, to be able to sum up a situation. Um, he did that perfectly on a couple of occasions during the race. He jumped well enough to lead. He didn't press on in lead. He basically handed it up to Nature Strip uh, probably 700, 600 metres out. Um, and then you know, had the audacity to sit, sit off him, go and pretty much the same pace, and then nail him in the last uh, 100 metres or so. So no instructions to Nash whatsoever. Um, just love to think he could get it right on the day. What about the gate? How important is the gate? Only 12 horses? Not at all. Not at all. And I say that, you know, Quite seriously, I, I don't think it matters where, where he draws. It matters where quite a few of them draw, but he has enough speed to, to offset a wide gate and an inside gate, um, will, I think, will, will produce the same result. How do you tick him over uh, just, you know, in the in the interim before the Everest? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's a pretty straightforward horse to deal with. Um, he enjoys his work. Um, you know, he'll have a couple of gallops a week, plenty of that swimming we've just been speaking about, um, just keeping grounded that trial just to take that edge off him so that he's not too fresh. Um, just more of what we've been doing, you know, and it's not, horses aren't, aren't after necessarily an imaginative way to have training. They love routine. Uh, he's got his routine. He goes out, he goes out at about quarter past four in the morning with Maxine. And, you know, if he, if he went out at 20 past four, he would know something different. He just loves his routine. And that's very much the cornerstone of the way he's trained. He's got a good name. He's got a good personality too, doesn't he? He gets a bit cranky sometimes. He goes, yeah, no. Yeah, he's just he's just a nice horse to handle, and you know, um, full credit to everyone that touched him before he got into into my hands. He's uh, he came to me. He's a he's a real gentleman, a cheeky a cheeky horse at times, a confident horse at, um, all the time. And but but I've noticed that that's a trait of a lot of good horses. They have a they have a confidence and an arrogance about them. And why wouldn't they? You know, they know they can run faster than other horses. There's no mistaking. They know what what kind of contests they're in. It's just, it's a test of speed, and um, I think he likes showing it off a bit. I should have used cheeky rather than cranky because he's not cranky cheeky. <laughs> there's, there's a fine line. But what, what about the magic of this particular race? Um, it, it's caught the imagination so quickly. Only 2017 when it started, Red Zell won the first couple. And uh, it's got people chatting all around the world in horse racing terms. Yeah, you know, I think as it, sort of going back to what I was saying before, I think the fact that it's a sprint is so important. Um, if we had this as a 2,000 metre race, um, while it would still be a good race, I'm sure, um, it would be taken up by a lot of foreign raiders, but I think concentrating on something that we're so good at here in Australia, breeding, breeding and racing sprinters, um, it's a it's a great contest, and 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 everybody knows the, the contestants so well, and that's I think that's the what people want uh, in, in from a gambling product is a bit of familiarity, you know, uh, just just the the knowledge that they can can monitor along the way that every step. It's a bit like sort of betting on the NRL team. You get to see them week in week out. It's very important. Is it is it all about him and not about any of the, the horses that he's got to beat? Is that is that the way you see it, Joe? Well, look, I'm, I'm intrigued by the by the by the battle and the the lead up as much as anyone else. But my job's certainly a simple one in, in terms of just preparing the one horse. Uh, but you, you don't get me wrong. Of course, I'm keeping an eye on the others, trialing and racing, and very interested to see who lines up in the premier. Um, so no, it's a, a fascinating contest. Will he win? Yes. Yeah. No, you're great. You know, um, I. I said it before the shorts, and I'll say it again. I, I wouldn't swap him for any other horse. Does that guarantee him success? Of course it doesn't. There's a lot of things that need to happen between now and then, but I go into the race with a second to none chance. And it looks like we're going to have at least a few people in. That'll be great just to get a crowd back on it of some sort. Right. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Um, look, it's, um, it's coming just at the right time. Even maybe if it was a month later, it'd be even better. But um, it's sort of it's maybe going to be one of the, the great moments that, that makes us realise and appreciate you know, what, we've, what we've missed over the past six months or so. Oh, absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us for the Everest podcast, Joe. All the very best with Eduardo. Congratulations with everything up to now. Great. Thanks very much, Tim.